The video you're about to watch is one of the lessons that I'm creating on kbtrainings.com for the course on the CCNA 200 301, where I go from zero to engineer. It's been over a year since I started creating this course. So it's a master course where you're going to learn everything that you need to know to go ahead and um, take and pass the CCNA certification, which can help you start or boost your career in EIT. So if you want to join me, the course is on kvtrainings.com and there is a forum where you can ask all your questions or you can reach out to me directly on the phone by email or on social media. Thank you so much and enjoy the lesson. Hey, what's up guys? This is Guy here with KB Trainings. Welcome to the lesson number 5.2.6. We are going to talk about small office, home office. So we are still under LAN architecture and this is where I'm going to show you how you can set up a Soho network. Soho, which is, of course, small office, home office. And I'm going to show you some of my equipments that I have here. These are the kind of equipments that you can use in a Soho or small office, home office. We have here a router, firewall, um, AP. We have a FortiGate firewall. We have a small uh, D-Link switch here. I have a small uh, TP-Link uh, router, firewall, and access point. So we're going to dig into all of these and I'm going to tell you exactly how you can um, deploy these different equipment. So first I'm going to tell you exactly what is a Soho and then I will show you some designs. Some, some of them will be simple and some will not be so simple. I mean, will be not so simple. So we're going to spend some time in Packet Tracer and I'm going to go over these different designs that I have here. Here I have simple, not so simple, not simple. And these are the kind of designs that you can deploy in a Soho. All right, so to start, what's a Soho? First of all, a Soho is um, a small office, home office. This might be like a remote branch of a big company, or it might be a small business. When I say small business, what is small? It depends on what you read. Sometimes small can be 10, 20, 100, 200 can still be considered small. It might be like a mom and pop small business where you have like 10 people sitting in a room or across two or three rooms. And I'm going to tell you how this small branch can connect to the corporate network or to the, the, the headquarter. And home office is just a home office. Today with COVID, a lot of people are working from home. So how can you set up your home to be able to work fine? And how are you going to connect to your corporate network? I'm going to go a little deeper into that. So home office is just a minimal setup that a teleworker, like uh, some of us, me, I've been working from home um, almost since the beginning of COVID in March, 2020. At some point I've, I've been back to the office, but it's mostly uh, from home these days. So a lot of people are working from home. How can you set up your home network? And if you are on the YouTube channel of KB Trainings, I've shown you how I installed my home network or my um, home design. So I have a playlist to those videos. I show you how I install everything, the firewall, the switch, the access point, the video surveillance, everything is detailed in there. That's a good resource for this lesson as well. You can see exactly how everything interconnects. So if you have a small office or a home office, you don't have or you don't have a need for um, a campus network. You don't need the three tier, two tier and so on. You can just design a small network. And that's what we're talking about here. And as I said, we are going to spend some time here in Packet Tracer where I'm going to show you these different designs that I have here. So let me zoom in on this first one, which is to me considered simple because we only have our service provider delivering internet. And then we have a single device that is at the same time um, a firewall. It's a router. It's a switch. Um, it's an AP. It's an access point. This single device does everything. And this is what you find in most of the homes. You find just a single device like this one here. This one was given to me by Centrelink, which is my fiber provider. So this device is at the same time a router because you have the one portion coming over here and then you have the LAN portion being split into these different um, ports. Even though you don't get all the features of a firewall, but you can do a little security with a router. So like this one here, it's not literally a firewall, 
I have some security built in just to protect my network. It also provides wireless connection at the same time. So it's also an AP or access point. This is an example of it. This also is an example of what I'm talking about here. This is a TP link. Uh, these are very common. So you have your WAN connection coming over here. And then you have this port. So this is like a small switch, a small four port switch that you have on this device. So it's a router, it's a switch. It's also an access point. You can see the antennas for wireless connection. So this is what I'm talking about in this design. And I also need to address the WAN section of this. So even though we are not looking at the WAN for this uh, specific lesson, but you have different ways of having your internet in your home or your small office. Like in this case, I'm using a cable modem, which means that my ISP or internet service provider is providing internet to me through cable. An example of that is what I have here. This is literally, uh, this is my cable modem that I use in my home network. And if you've been watching me on YouTube, you've seen this before. So this cable uses the quartial cable, just like your regular TV cable. Um, that we've been using. So we can use TV to transport internet or TV cable, a quasha cable for internet. And that will come and connect to this modem here. And modem means modulator, demodulator, which means that it's going to transform the signal that I'm receiving here in um, ethernet that I can use in my home network. So the cable will come and connect to the modem like this. And then we have an RJ45 output here where I can connect a UTP cable, and then I can go to a router, a firewall, a firewall like a, like a 40 gate, like this one here. So I can connect directly the cable to the 40 gate and will be able to access the internet. So this is just an example of a fiber connection, I mean, uh, a cable connection. You can also have DSL connection. This is a DSL, which means it uses the telephone line to carry internet traffic. You need the DSL modem as well to transform that signal or the traffic that you have into ethernet for your network. And in some cases like this one, you can have two WAN connections, WAN1 and WAN2, just like I'm doing on my home network, like I'm showing you on YouTube. So we have DSL on this side, we have cable on the other side, or you may have, uh, we have different options. You can have fiber, um, you can have 4G, like in this case, I put a cell tower here just to show you that you can have also the connection wirelessly. It can, it can come in and you have a device that is taking that wireless connection and giving you Ethernet inside. It might be 4G, 5G, LTE, and so on. So you have different ways of dealing with the WAN part of it. In the next chapter, we're going to talk about WAN and different types of connection that you can have. So I just want to get that out of the way. And here we're talking about the LAN portion of a small office or home office design. In this case, as I said, we have a cable modem connected to our device that is a firewall. It is a router, it is a switch, it is an AP, all of that included in this same device. And as I was saying, most of the routers can do some security. All the firewall can do routing. At least so far, every firewall that I see can also do routing. Even though sometime on the internet or in some books, I see a design where you have a firewall and then behind a, behind a firewall, you have a router. Unless there is a need for that kind of design, but mostly a firewall can also do routing. If you have a firewall, you don't need a router behind it. You just connect everything to the firewall. So you can see the uh, desktop are connected to this device and the phones are connected to the same device wirelessly like we can see it here. So this is a, a simple design. And if you're enjoying the video so far, please like the video on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to the channel for all the updates on my new project on network security, development, and all kinds of things. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss anything. Thank you. So let's go to the not so simple design, which is right here. I call it not so simple because some devices are now assuming the full functions. Like here, we have a DSL connection coming. It's connected to a router, so we have a router over here, but we also have a switch, and we have an access point connected to the switch. 
this is a not so simple design where the functions are split. Even in this design here, if you need more ports, let's say for example, you need 10 ports and on your device, you only have four. You can use a small switch like the one that I have here. This is a small D-Link switch. You can use this switch to have more ports in your network. So it's not forbidden to have like a switch over here if you have some more uh, devices to connect so you can have them connected to your wired network instead of using them wirelessly. All right, so as I said, in this design here, we have an AP, we have um, a switch, we have a router. There are, and we have different devices here for each function. The router does some security too, and it points to the ISP's router. So every uh, all the traffic that you have will go out to the ISP. And I'm going to show you later on how you can get some connection from here to your headquarter or how you can connect remotely to your headquarter for, uh, for remote access. So let's go to the third design that I have here. This is the design that is not simple, almost close to the one that I'm using in my home network. As I said, there is a link to my playlist where I talk about the installation of my home network. So here we have two connections, two WAN connection. We have ISP1 and ISP2 providing WAN1 and WAN2. In my videos, I showed you how I use SD1 to balance the traffic between the two connections that I have, the primary and the backup. The link will be in the description of this lesson. And here we have a firewall. This is a firewall for our home network. It's connected to both WAN1 and WAN2, and it knows how to manage these two connections. And behind the firewall, we have a switch where we have our access point attached. So this is the access point and some wireless devices can connect to the access point. Even this laptop here, it can use the wire to connect to the switch or it can connect to the network wirelessly. And we have a printer over here connected to the switch. We have a desktop connected to the switch. We even have an IP phone. If you need to use an IP phone, this is a, a VoIP uh, device. You can connect it to the switch and we also saw the voice VLAN when we talked about the VLAN. So you can have a voice VLAN inside this link here coming to the IP phone. And below that, you can have a laptop or a desktop connected to, to, to the IP phone for the data VLAN. So we have the data VLAN coming over here and we have the voice VLAN coming to the IP phone. We can also have a server. A server is there for many reasons. We can have some services running locally like a file server or even Active Directory or all, all, all kinds of things can be run locally on this design or some of your services can be out to the cloud so you can have internet connection with your services hosted in a cloud or like I was saying you have remote connectivity as well you might have to connect to your headquarter so let me put some kind of headquarter here so this is your big building which is your headquarter um headquarter so this say uh, let's say this is your corporate network this is your primary corporate network so let's say this is the headquarter in new york and then you want to have a small office in la so this is your la office so what you have to do you have many options to um, connect to the main office but the easiest one is to create a side-to-side -side vpn tunnel between the firewall in your LA office or your small LA office to the headquarter. So it's going to be um, uh, like an IPsec VPN. This is just an example. You can have an IPsec VPN between this site and your headquarter, or you can have some LAN services or Metro E um, services from your, your ISP to connect this remote location to your primary uh, um, connect uh, to your primary network or your corporate network. That is for the whole site. But for the users inside the site, like in this case, for example, if we are here, let's say this is a home network. So you work from home and you have your laptop. This is your laptop. This is your wife's laptop. You may work for the same company or not. So you need to have, you can have a client VPN or a VPN client on your computer and the VPN client can create a tunnel between you and your headquarters. So you can connect to your corporate network using an IPsec tunnel, for example. 
and then you are going to be part of your corporate network. We're going to talk about VPN when we will be talking about security, but I need to mention some things like split tunnel. There is a term used in this case called split tunnel. When you activate split tunnel with your VPN connection, it means that only the traffic that goes to your corporate network goes through the tunnel. And all other traffic, like the traffic going to the internet, will not use the VPN tunnel all the way to the headquarter. It will go directly from your network to the internet. That's when split tunnel is enabled. If you have split tunnel disabled, all the traffic will go through the tunnel and will go through your corporate network. Let me try to explain. Let's say this is the firewall in your corporate network. Okay. And then you have a VPN a client on your device, which means that you have a tunnel, virtual tunnel, connecting you directly to your headquarter. Okay? So if you have split tunnel enabled, it means that the traffic that you want to send to your corporate network will go through the IPsec tunnel. All other traffic, if you want to go to Google, if you want to go to anything else than your corporate subnet or your corporate network, that traffic will take this path and go to the internet directly. Of course, this IP tech tunnel comes uh, through your, your WAN as well, but I'm just representing it here, just like a direct tunnel to your device. So this is when split tunnel is enabled. If it's not enabled, all the traffic will go through the tunnel. Even if you want to go to the internet, it's going to use your corporate firewall to access the internet. That split tunnel, it's something that we're going to cover in detail. All right, I think that's it. I explained the third um, design here, which is not so simple. We have a firewall, we have servers, we have access points, we have phones, we have laptop and everything connected to the switch. We might even have more switches, depending on how many employees we have here. We may have multiple switches and all of this can be in the same VLAN or they can be in different VLANs, depending on your setup and your need. But um, at least in all the networks today, even in home networks, uh, when it comes to Wi-Fi, you usually see guest VLAN being implemented, which means that we have your main, your main network for your home and then you have a separate network or SSID for your guest. And most of the wireless access points today, even autonomous wireless access points, can let you create a guest VLAN for your network so that your guests will not be in the same network as your other devices. And usually the guest network has a very simple password. It might be just your name or the name of your kid and so on. And a lot of businesses uh, also offer uh, internet connections for the, the visitors or the, the guests in the business. So you can have the name of your business as an SSID and then you have a very simple password so that the visitors can also connect to the internet. All right, guys, that's it for this lesson. I have a link for you to go and read more on Soho. And I also have links to the playlist on my home network installation, which is like an enterprise network. And uh, yeah, that's it. If you have any question, you can go in a forum and ask your question. You can also just send me an email or a message. I'm going to be glad to respond. And thank you for watching this lesson and I'll see you in the next one. Take care and bye.